Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel of nonsense. Well, today is not actually nonsense because I've got my sensible hat on, it's here, it's invisible, because I'm doing a sensible review of a sensible family SUV. It's this, the Land Rover Discovery Sport. It's been run for four months by Drive Tribe's main video presenter, Mike Fernie, the one who can actually say Drive Tribe, not me. And uh, yeah, he doesn't have kids, so I, I've borrowed it for a week or two to give it a thorough family pasting. And because it's a Land Rover product, I think I'm contractually obliged to drive it into a river. So I'll try and do that over the next couple of days and I'll take you along for the ride and see if it's any good. Yes, as you probably know, the Discovery Sport's been around since about 2015 when it was introduced as a replacement for the Freelander. And it was based on the Evoque platform. So despite having seven seats, it's not actually a massive SUV. And in Land Rover terms, Sport really means a smaller version rather than actually sporty. Take the Range Rover Sport, for example. It's just a smaller Range Rover. This is a smaller Discovery. Kind of fits the same thing, does the same job. It's practical, it's family-ish and it's, uh, it's a bit smaller. Now they start at 32,000 pounds, this one is 51,000 pounds. Let's check it out. Back in 2019, Land Rover gave the Disco Sport a proper share level facelift. You've got new headlights with these new daytime running lights, which if you live in the UK, you're gonna be familiar with because since I've been driving one of these, all I see are Discovery Sports. It's ridiculously popular in the UK. It's a bit like when you played the old Grand Theft Auto games. As soon as you got in a fast car, all the other traffic cars became the same car. I think to save memory, it's like that in one of these. As you'd expect, most of the Discovery Sport range is permanent four-wheel drive, electrically controlled, that kind of stuff. Though you can get a front-wheel drive one with a manual gearbox on the entry-level diesel. I'm not sure if you can actually buy that anymore, but you certainly could a couple of weeks ago. They change this all the time. Anyway, this is a 240 horsepower four-cylinder diesel, basically a common or garden disco sport. You can now get a plug-in hybrid one as well. You might notice it looks a bit bulky back here. That's because there's a third row of seats, two tiny little seats in the back, which I'll try and show you later if I can faff about with my child seats. Are we being sensible enough? I hope so. Try and stay awake at the back. As part of the face, if you've got these new dimmed tail lights, and they lost that circular motif, which made the old one look a little bit dated. This is an SE model, which means it gets an electrically powered one of those. You get about 750 liters of boot space, which is massive. Land Rover will say it's a thousand liters, but they measure to the roof. So if you don't like seeing behind you, it's a thousand liters. Although I say that, this car actually has a camera up here somewhere and it projects that image onto the rear view mirror. So you can flip between a real mirror and a digital mirror. So if this is full, you can still see out the back. It's marvelous. These are your rear third row seats. They lift up like this with these little fabric hoops. And yeah, there's really not much room back there. It's best for kids or really, really small adults without any legs, but there we go. I'm never going to fit in there. I'll try. I'll put my dignity on the line and I'll try and show you them now. Right, can a bald six foot three man fit in the back seats? I've slid this forward. The back seats slide back and forth. That folds forward. Oh, it goes forward a bit more. Duh. Okay, going back. I hope I can get out. Otherwise, I'm just going to be stuck here in the middle of nowhere. Um, no, I, <laughs> I don't fit back here. My head's implanted in the ceiling and I can't slide this seat back to flip it back because my feet are too big. They're getting crushed. So yeah, uh, kids would fit back here, like probably seven year olds is your max. But um, yeah, I definitely do not. 
Can I get out again without giving myself a hernia? I'll tell you what, the back seats are pretty bloody roomy. I've got loads of headroom, even with the 1,000 pound extra panoramic sunroof, loads of knee room, and you can slide the seats forward and back, as I just showed you, which means you get more boot space by sliding these forward. And I know Mike and the video team have found that very useful when packing the boot with stuff. There is a circular 12 volt socket in here, and that's about it. There's a armrest with a cup holders and a cubby hole thing there, but I don't think there are any USBs in here. This car's meant to have loads of them, but um, I can't find them. Oh no, that's not gonna put in there. No, but it's roomy, it's nice, and it's well easy to fit child seats back here. I've had two side by side, and you don't have to bend down to stick your kids in when they're wrestling with you and calling you the worst thing that ever happened to them. Or is that just me? Right, let's talk about the interior and be sensible about things. This has got Land Rover's old Touch Pro infotainment system. However, for the 2021 model year, you get that all new, all singing, all dancing, all quite brilliant, frankly, PIVI system that's in the new Defender, which is much quicker than this in terms of processing power, and it's a pleasure to use. But this still isn't bad. You've got sat-nav for everything. You've got digital driver's display, which can show your sat-nav, and you can customize it to your heart's content. The steering wheel, that's a bit weird. It's suede cloth, so it's like Alcantara. And uh, yeah, it's a bit odd in an SUV. It's a no-cost option, but it's actually got a really pleasingly thin tactile rim to it. These buttons on the steering wheel, they change what the writing says on them when you press them. They're not actually just, I don't know, it's very clever. They're backlit, obviously, but um, they're very smart. They're very nice to use. It's a quite nice cabin, to be honest. This has got a bit too much black plastic around the buttons. It feels like you're missing lots of stuff here. And when you press this button, you can choose your terrain response and all that kind of stuff for your off-roading because it's a Land Rover. And you press this one and you adjust your fan speed. It's all fairly straightforward. There aren't really any driving modes beyond the terrain response. You get in it, put it in gear and drive. There's a big cubby hole up here, which has two normal USBs and a 12 volt socket and a micro SIM card hole. It's got wireless charging for your phone. It's got pretty much everything you need for a family SUV. I think these might be vegan seats as well. I need to check that out. I'm sure it's an option, it is on the Velar and a few other things as well. So if you are vegan, you can buy one with a clear conscience. Oh yes, this is the digital rear view mirror that I was talking about. Basically it feeds off a camera at the back of the car. So you can have normal mirror, see the camera, fake mirror, see what's outside. So if you're towing a massive trailer, this is useful. Or if you filled that boot to the brim, it's also quite useful. Now, I'm not a huge fan of these. There's one in the Honda E as well. And what you find in everyday driving is it takes your eyes a little second to focus from the road to this. Now, obviously with a normal mirror, your eyes don't have to refocus because well, it's the same distance, the reflected light, isn't it, from the mirror. But this is a solid object that's about a foot from your face. So there's a little bit of readjustment time between that and that. Right, that's it for the interior. Let's go and drive it. Jump cut to tomorrow, because I've run out of time today, and being a sensible family man, I've got to go and collect my daughter. I'll see you tomorrow. Right, another day. Continuity jumper is on. I've actually changed my underwear, but the rest of me is the same. Driving the Discovery Sport. It's gonna be a fairly quick bit. It's pretty comfortable. At low speeds, it's a little bit crashy over some bumps, but when you're up to speed, it's quite cocoon there's not much road noise it's very hushed actually on smooth tarmac at least is it sporty nah nah not at all it rolls about in corners um like you would expect something that's quite softly suspended but it's not unpleasant doesn't make you feel sick you just can't drive it very quickly around corners without it having a bit of a stability control nightmare if you're being an actual knob but it's fine. Like, you can take it down a country road quick enough in excess of the national speed limit. Yeah, it's fine. This one will do 0 to 60 in 7.3 seconds with that 240 horsepower, 500 newton meter, 2 litre diesel. It'll go on to 130 something miles an hour. And it's actually, yeah, it's quite talky. It kind of picks up its skirt and it goes well enough. It's just not outstanding. It sounds a little bit thrashy, but the engine noise is actually quite well muted. And that's basically about it. The visibility is fine, apart from out the back. That rear window feels a long way away, and it's quite small and letterboxy. So you rely on the cameras a lot when you're reverse parking, but 
it's fine it's easy to place on the road the steering is really light it's quite nice at low speeds when you're parking it goes where you point it there's nothing wrong with it really in the steering respect the brakes are fine they do the job obviously you're not going to drive this like a sports car so that kind of stuff doesn't matter what does matter possibly a bit more than in something like an audi q5 is how this fares off road because it's a land rover product i'm on my way to a local green lane i might regret this i might take it through a river depending on how brave i'm feeling because i've got a wade depth sensor here it can wade for two feet before you drown the engine we'll see how we go i might wuss out and just do a muddy trail but we'll see when we get there back in a bit Right, I'm at the start of my local muddy green lane. To set the car up, I just press this button here, which is the train response button. I'm gonna go with mud ruts because that's what it looks like down here. It gives me a little display to show what the four wheels are doing and I guess what the four wheel drive system is doing. And then I think it's just a case of putting it in drive and going. There is a man with his dog, so I'm just gonna go very slowly and wait for him. Obviously you should always drive slowly when you're on byways in England, but this is legal. It's open to all traffic and I've got a Land Rover, albeit quite a road biased one. Let's see how we get on and see if we get stuck or shouted at. We might get shouted at. Let's see how long until I ground this out. Thank you. Is it really muddy down there or is it all right? Um, have you ever been down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've been through the river a few times, not, I mean, not in this. Oh, it's not mine. That's all right. It's Land Rover's. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Apparently, uh, the ruts down here are very, very deep. Hmm. This might have been an unwise thing to do. But anyway, uh, traction's not going to be an issue, I don't think. I'm on road tyres, but the mud's kind of dried out. It's probably just taking the top of my GoPro off on some branches. Last time I came down here was in a Jeep Wrangler with mechanical diff locks and all that good stuff and it monstered it. Um, this is, you know, it's going to be a walk in the park, really. Just getting that mirror around a tree. Okie dokie. I've got an off-road information screen here with which I can hit drive assist. It will show me where my wheels are. I've got a big ditch down there and I can see this camera exactly where that wheel is. But yeah, I mean, this isn't that taxing really. I'm just driving and it's muddy-ish. To be honest, I'd probably be able to do this in a hatchback at the moment. Possibly wasn't a great test. Right, I am going to park up and see how bad it is on foot before deciding whether to carry on or not. Yeah, I've just walked down the really harsh bit of this track and I don't think this will make it down there. It's like, I don't know, half meter drop sideways i think this will ground out and i don't want to destroy it but the jeep wrangler did do it i just wouldn't feel confident doing this right let's go over to mike to see what he's discovered about this car in the past four months of living with it oh you're doing the lean sorry, <laughs> sorry. No, no, no. no no you can you can do what you can do whatever you want i'll probably leave this in so mike you've been living with this for three or four months now yep. so you've had a chance to get used to it and it's become part of your family is it like one of those family members that you won't really miss when it dies in the great funeral home of car world? It's actually been really good for what we've used it for. Yeah. So we've used it to just bomb up and down the motorway for shoots basically up the M40, up the M1. And it's big car, small engine. So on roads like you've got around here, not fantastic. But when you're doing just slogs up the motorway, cruise control, it's absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, it's been a great work for a workhorse for us so far. And um, yeah, I'm going to miss it a wee bit, to be honest. Okay, fine. Um, obviously, you're our head of video at Drive Tribe, so you're usually carrying kit and people, COVID permitting. Has it been comfy? Has it been roomy enough? Or do you yeah. it been, would you have preferred to have the bigger Discovery? When you do see a full fat Discovery um, on the roads, it, you do feel a bit um spoiled to be honest but the suspension is fantastic actually really comfy car the mvh is actually really good because that engine i know is thrashy when you've got the window open but yeah. once you're all locked in it's actually really nice um yeah we've thrown loads of kit into it 
and it's completely eaten up. So yeah, um, it's not obviously the biggest Land Rover product, but yeah, it's dealt with everything we've thrown at it. Have you taken off-roading? I haven't, and I know you <laughs> want me to. Shall and to we, be honest, this is probably Shall we go place. green laning after this? Potentially. There is a place, I mean, the body works destroyed anyway. So. I, w I would just be petrified to, I'm not, I know I'm not very good at it. I've done like, you know, those days at off-road centers yes. and I'm shit. So really? I don't know why, I, just... I would get it stuck and he'd be like, Tim, can you phone These things drive the themselves, it's fine. Watch as we get stuck in the next video. <laughs> um, what has annoyed you about it? Um, the infotainment is good and bad. Um, they've just launched this over the air update system thing, yeah. which is cool. Um, it's kind of following in the, the wake of Tesla with it. But um, it basically has a bit of a fit when you actually try to install something it asks you if you right. want to install it and of course you say yes this upgrade sounds yeah. great but then it's basically conks out for the next journey so if you just start and stop it you'll be fine but when you're on the motorway you're a bit buggered is this someone else you need to explain to uh, no, right? I, don't, I don't think so oh big oh, dog oh yeah okay got, that's just a speaker in the back of his van that he presses to alarm people so yeah my Touareg used to do that it would get an over the air update and it would take about an hour to install and you couldn't use it at all while it was doing it yeah and it's JLR's infotainment system which um, it's good but it definitely has its limits compared to some of the best on the market um, but it also has its good points um, it is probably the best car I've ever driven in terms of detecting speed cameras <laughs> it absolutely nails that so it's despite the fact it's can't break the speed limit very easily. Yeah, it can tell yeah. you about the speed cap. And it gives you like 500 yard warnings, so it, it way up the road, um, it detects it. And a lot of other cars try to do that and they just kind of fail and don't detect some, detect yeah, others. Yeah. Um, and then I've written an article about this on Drive Tribe, but it has the best indicator tick of any car in the market. That I is think. classic Mike Fernie, the important things that really matter. It's got a nice indicator tick. It does. When you do it, it's just got a really nice, like, is it delicate? Thump. It's oh, got it's a base thump. to it. Oh, okay. It's nice. It's nice. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, I look forward to hearing your review of that specifically. Brilliant. So out of 10 then, as a family SUV thing, maybe, you know, you're probably a bit young and a bit familyless to really <laughs> make the most of it. What would you give it out of 10? Um, I think I'd give it six because it does all the practical stuff very well, but it kind of leaves me wanting for the sort of, I don't know how to say it, the car bits. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would want a bigger engine. Um, I'd probably want some of the more kit in it. Um, and I'd want it to look slightly better. It doesn't look bad, but I think it could look a bit better. And I, as I say, I see the Range Rovers and proper discoveries on the road and they look awesome. So, um, but yeah, I, I would say it, it's definitely passed the test. It's been a great production car, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to hear what you think. Cool. So it's not set your heart on fire then, basically. No, no. I'm looking forward to having a go in your Mini. Yeah, my Mini is a bit feistier than this, but, you know, different things. Right, thank you very much, Mike. Back to you, Tim, for your more boring bit on your own, in the same place, on a different day, wearing different clothes with no continuity. <laughs> Yep, I'm wearing different clothes again for the outro. I think I've had more costume changes than Lady Gaga in this video. But anyway, Discovery Sport, it's a pretty good SUV. It does things a bit differently to the likes of the Audi Q5 and any of those other kind of 50-ish grand SUVs because it majors on comfort with more off-road ability than they would give you. Obviously, it's not going to demolish a normal Discovery off-road. doesn't have air suspension for a start. So if you do want to go off-road and the ground clearance is the limiting factor here, you'll want to save up for the big boy Discovery, but still pretty impressive and it's easy to drive. Not really any driver modes, just go for it. It's simple, it's got seven seats, it's got a massive boot. The diesel engine is a little bit thirsty. I've been getting about 35 mpg, so could do better there, but remember, permanent four-wheel drive ish electrically controlled anyway so yeah overall i'm pretty impressed with it i think mike's quite enjoyed his time with it but he just needs a family to make the most of it anyway thank you ever so much for watching enough waffle from me uh, hit my bell like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time in a different car that's not in the mud